or down. So we had another model. Because, you know, there's a problem with sparing. You, have, you, you think you're looking at regeneration, but maybe you know, some of the actions you're looking at uh, weren't cut in the first place, and they were spared from, from being cut by inflammation after injury by your treatment. So we went back to our transplantation model and transplanted in adult neurons adjacent to an injury bridged with our type of sites. And once again, we saw 40% efficiency of their axons across the injury sites. So we reproduced the data, a different system. What was really interesting was if the transplant didn't survive very well, the bridging cells didn't survive to make a proper bridge, the axons couldn't cross. If the transplanted neurons, the axons grow quite happily away from the injury, but they formed the dystrophic endings, just like the heart shows, the bridge didn't survive. Luckily, most bridges, bridges did survive. We got good axon growth across the injury. So you have to have a bridge uh, of cells spanning the injury site for axons to cross. But what was really interesting if you took the glial restricted precursors that we'd use to make the astrocytes more naive in terms of that they still have the potential to make different types of cells and put them in, they didn't make a bridge. Now this time red is, is the, the glial restricted precursors, the neurons and axons in green, and you can see the axons fail to cross the intracyte. You've got to turn these cells, these precursors, into a specific type of astrocyte to get the effect. So putting in naive stem cells, or in this case, glial restricted precursors, which a stem cell would make, didn't give us uh, a bridge at that axon to cross. It's really important. So we were also interested in behavioral recovery and looking at a, a descending motor control pathway, such as the rubus spinal tract that, uh, that Juanita uh, introduced you to earlier. So this is a larger injury now. We're taking a pair of scissors to the spinal cord, taking out uh, the upper quadrant of the spinal cord, C1, C2, adult rats. And we also did grid walk analysis. However, we used uh, evenly spaced runs. And our idea was, and I'm going to disagree with you here, our idea was we trained the rats for three weeks to cross the ladders. And we only took rats that were really good at crossing the ladder and weren't making mistakes. So the idea is then that when we make our injury, uh, we're, you know, these rats have the optimum chance of crossing uh, without making mistakes. What we have here is that we're going to have nine animals in each test group for this initial experiment. And so you show you three sets of experiments. And so we have large numbers of animals. These are animals here which had a sham operation, opened the down the spinal cord but didn't cut it. And they make the same number of mistakes they made before getting uh, the surgery. They make two mistakes on average per run. However, we have two sets of control groups with a lesion, an injury, or lesion plus immunosuppression. And they make on average six to eight mistakes per run. Notice how tight the error bars are. But those that receive our type 1 astrocytes at three days post injury are already making less mistakes. And this continues right out to a month post injury. So the idea is we're, we're really challenging the system here. This is, you know, uh, the idea is that, that this is optimized these rats to cross. And without uh, uh, treatment, they, they don't make the same mistakes per run. Uh, uh, and, and they don't improve. Statistically, they don't improve. But with the type 1 astrocytes, you get an immediate improvement. I think it's a neuroprotective effect and then the, 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 this continues out, out to a month. What was really interesting was if we put in the naive stem cell-like precursors, put them in, we saw no recovery at all. And now here's another set of nine animals that received type 1 astrocytes, and they're back to normal scores by 14 days. Look at the error bars, that's all nine back to normal scores, a really robust effect. And you know, uh, we've repeated this many times because you know, we present this kind of data, and you know, people can say, hey, wait a minute, it's too good to be true. Well, this is what we're seeing. Every time we put these cells in, we're getting this kind of effect in with this lesion model. What happens if you put in type 2 astrocytes? Because there's a general idea out there that maybe you know, embryonic astrocytes are good for promoting growth because, uh, especially ones you might make from a stem cell-like precursor, they, they should be really good. But what we found was if you put in type 2 astrocytes, you see there was no recovery at all. Another set of nine animals were type 1 astrocytes, and they're almost back to normal scores once again by a month. So you have to make the right kind of astrocyte, in this instance, from your stem cells. You can't use naive stem cells. And the idea is that generally what we're doing here is that we're, we're, we're controlling what our stem cell like precursor turns into and not the injury site, which we think will we'll, we'll want to turn your GERT cell into a scar-like astrocyte, because that's what the tissue's making at the time. Stem cells and precursors, by definition, will turn into whatever you know, the tissue's making at the time. And if the injured nerve system's making scar, there's good evidence from us and other groups that your stem cell cells have become recruited to make the scar. The scar is neuroprotective, it's protective. The spinal cord makes it for a very good reason. 
to protect your, your, your spinal cord from, from not only from inflammation after an injury, but also from bacterial uh, uh, infection. Mm. So, you know, the scar's there for a very good reason, but of course, nature becomes a barrier to regeneration. So, I'm just finish up here. Um, we also looked at, at, at uh, 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 we're interested in, in, in neural nature. Some of you may know, and some of you may not know, that when you have a spinal cord injury, unfortunately, you also have changes in the brain. And neurons up in the red nucleus, atrophy, when their axons are cut. They don't necessarily die, but they don't like having their axons cut. So, in an, in an uninjured red nucleus, you have these healthy looking neurons. In an injured red nucleus, when you cut the axons down the spinal cord, you get a lot of neuron atrophy. You see that the, the, the cells are missing here, the large cells are gone. When you transplant type 1 astrocytes into the spinal cord, and look in the red nucleus, what you find is that you now have, uh, instead of 50% of the neurons undergoing atrophy without, without a treatment, only 18% have undergone, uh, undergone atrophy. So there's, a, there's a, 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 a robust neuroprotective effect also associated with these cells. Apart from making you know, a bridge for axon growth, they're also having protective effects up in the brain, even though you put them in the spinal cord. But what we think is happening is growth factors are being released from the cells in the spinal cord and going back up into the brain and then preventing this atrophy of the neurons. So, in, in closing, the next, one of the next phases. Well, I, I hope that I've piqued your interest in type 1 astrocytes uh, derived from glial precursors and decorin as potential new therapies for, for repairing the nervous system. And, you know, once again, these, these are the precursors are from the spinal cord, and decorin is normally found in the spinal cord, so we're using right think of natural molecules and cells uh, of the nervous system to try and repair the nervous system. We have pharmaceutical grade decorin. Now, I'm often asked, you know, how long is it going to take to get these therapies to, to the clinic? And, you know, you have to do the basic science to prove things that are safe in rats and, and then maybe in, in larger animals before you move to humans. But you also have to make sure, and say, in terms of say, your decorin, that you can make the pharmaceutical grade of the molecule. And that can be a real technical challenge. We've already cracked that. So that's really going to speed up getting a uh, treatment like decorin to the clinic. So we want, we're, we're in the process now of developing the human form of our type 1 astrocytes. What I will say is, at the moment, things are looking really promising. And we want to test the human type of astrocytes and, and, and human decorin in both acute and chronic spinal cord injury in rats before we then develop uh, these, these uh, uh, thera potential therapies for clinical trial. So I do acknowledge some of the people involved in these studies. Um, I should, of course, acknowledge my wife, Jeanette, who's, who's uh, as I said, my spouse, but also my colleague. And uh, this is the team I had at Baylor College of Medicine. And now here's the new team that uh, uh, I'm putting together at the University of Colorado. Simon Archibald at Integral Life Sciences who really helped me uh, with the developing uh, decorin for, for repair of spinal cord injury. And the group at the University of Rochester who uh, 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 gave us the glial precursor cells and, and discovered these cells. Thank you very much. <laughs>